guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. I probably should have done like some face cam for this, but I just can't be bothered right now and I gotta film this video. Um, I wanna talk to you today about uh, pumping, milk supply, breastfeeding, and basically what I've been doing to try to stay on top of it all. It has been, it, it is, it is a stressful thing and if you are like me in a position where you have to pump at work or whatever, or oh gosh, heaven bless you, exclusively pump, um, then hopefully we can have a little conversation about that today. And I am no uh, you know, authority on anything. I'm not a lactation consultant or a doctor. I'm just telling you what I've tried and what worked for me or has sort of been working for me. And it's not like I, where I, I would, I, you know, everyone says they would want to have, everyone who doesn't have an oversupply wishes they had an oversupply. And everyone who does knows that it's probably a mess. So I'm, I'm grateful that I make enough for my baby. And my stash has not fluctuated too much, though I do stress about it a lot. So first of all, this is the insert that I use to keep track of my milk supply while I'm pumping at work. Um, this is from my shop, GanchiPlans.com. It's insert number 18. And it specifically doesn't have a header that says what it is because it could really be for anything, um, any sort of inventory tracking, but um, it's actually named like milk tracker, pumping log, or I think it's called pumping log. Anyway, but the, that's what I designed it for and that's what I used it for. So the pocket size at least has five sections. Different sizes have different sections. But the idea is you keep track of your income and your output or whatever, you know, it, what I'm pumping and what she's eating every day. And then there's the math for the total overall. And I've been keeping this log since I went back to work December 28th, right after Christmas. And um, I just, I, I like, you know, I'm a nerd about these numbers and I obsess about them probably to an unhealthy level. Um, but you can see here where it started like my very first day, I pumped eight ounces. She ate five, so that was fine, but that's not very much because I think she was still getting used to it. It's changed since then. And I'm just, you know, keeping notation and all of this. Um, and so like the beginning of the week and the end of the week, it went up one week, down the next, up the next week, up again, then just stayed, you know, even, and then it went down. <laughs> and so I start freaking out. Um, this was, I guess, it was really, no. At some point in here I was doing, yeah, I was doing an extra pumping session at night. That's when it was starting to go up again. So basically, it's really easy to focus on, like, the numbers for, like, you see, yeah, this pumping session got me one and a half ounces, which is depressing. That is bad for me. Two is not great, but pretty average. Anything less than two, I am disappointed in. And it's so easy to focus on that number, um, even though eight and a half is not great for the day, you know, but then over the course of the week, I didn't lose that much, you know? And so like, eh. like I'm still at this point, um, like a month and a half in to working. Um, I'm up 18 and a half ounces from where I started. So I'm, I'm holding steady and I have enough of a supply that I don't have to worry about one day throwing me off completely and needing to go you know, buy formula in the middle of the night. So the thing is I should be grateful and I have to keep reminding myself of that. On one hand, I like being able to keep track of it very minutely like this. And on the other hand, it's probably a curse. Um, but the point, uh, I wanted to go over a few things that I did to sort of try to boost my supply so that I would you know, have a slightly net positive trajectory instead of having to worry about my milk running out. Because with my first daughter, my milk did run out around six months old. I mean, it started, I started producing less than she was eating at six months old. The things I'm doing to try to be different this time, for one thing, you do tend to, it's easier a little bit uh, to produce with your second child because my body already knew what it was doing um, and had extra set of hormones to get me started up again. Um, but also with my first daughter, I would pump once in the morning at work, once at lunch at home, and then once again in the afternoon at work. This time I've been pumping four times a day. I've been working from home so far, which makes that easy, but I'm going back to the office. They're giving me an actual office with a door so I can keep working uh, during those pumping sessions, not pump it all over my lunch break, but still get stuff done during the pumping session so I don't feel like I'm wasting my company's time, but I can still at the same time produce enough milk for my daughter, which is great. I'm so grateful that that's happening. Um, but the things that, besides that extra pumping session, um, you can see I already mentioned I was doing some evening pumping for a while. 
and that was helping. I also accompanied that with once daily power pumping sessions, these ones with the um, asterisk, because I really just wanted to boost myself real good. And I only kept that up for maybe a week or so. Um, so I was pumping five times a day and one of those was a power pumping session, which if you're not familiar is for a whole hour. It's trying to simulate um, cluster feeding. So you do 20 on, 10 minute break, 10 minutes pumping, 10 minute break, 10 minutes pumping. So that's a full hour. And it's supposed to, over the course of, you know, after a few days of doing that, trigger your body to be like, ah, I need to make more milk, like cluster feeding does, and to boost things. And it did, it took a couple days and then it, it started to work. Having an extra pumping session in there was great. That started to get to the point where I was consistently producing as much or more than she ate. So that was helpful. Uh, eventually though, I decided I was like, I, I would get to the end of the day, I would find out how much she had drunk and it was less than I had put out. And so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to bother doing the evening session. And then I kind of, you know, evened out again, kind of plateaued. So it wasn't, it was good to get up to a certain point, but then once I was there, I was able to drop it. So that's always something that I can pull out of my arsenal you know, cause she's sleeping great. So I can pull out the pump at 10 PM right before bed and do another session there if I need to. Um, I haven't for a while, but it is in my back pocket. One other thing that I tried uh, included in my routine was mother's milk tea. There's a couple different brands of this, but traditional medicinals is pretty common. It's available at Walmart. So that's where I get it with my grocery order. Um, and it is not too expensive, uh, especially if you reuse tea bags, which I did. So for a while I would take drink like four cups a day, reusing a bag for two cups, so two tea bags a day. Then I cut it down to like two cups a day with one tea bag, and now it's like one cup every so often when I remember. Uh, the weather's warming up is one part of it, and the other part is I'm not, like I, I found that it really helped right at first. I, I felt like it helped right at first, but I was also accompanying it with some other things like the power pumping and, um, and then, so it doesn't hurt, fortunately, but the thing, it can. If you have hypothyroidism, then apparently fenugreek can have the opposite effect and can make you dry up. So be aware of that if you think that might be a problem for you. But if not, it's, you know, not a, a problem. It's just, you know, fennel if you don't like the smell or taste of black licorice, which I don't. I don't think it's too bad. Um, it's more the smell than the taste and I can get over it and I've started to almost like it. But it's not like you don't drink this for the taste, but it works. Um, it, it helped me. A little bit and it's nice to have that as a routine and the other thing is it does help you drink more um, one other thing I tried I saw these advertised on Facebook and they sponsored a video on um, nurse Zabe's channel so I'm like okay fine I'll try them because I do feel like I might be sort of between flange sizes so these are these cushions and this is what they look like this is basically what they look like straight out of the box because I used them once it was more effort than it was worth. The very first time I per turned on the pump with these on, it hurt more. Um, I can't get them to sit properly. They're sticky and weird and difficult to position. And when I put them on my left breast, they um, it makes my straps not hold it in place properly. And so I have to hold that with my hand and it's just not worth it. I need to be hands free so that I can, you know, massage my boobs while I'm pumping for one thing. So anyway, this didn't really work for me, um, but you know, whatever, they're not that expensive. I feel like they were maybe, I don't remember, maybe 15 bucks, is that right? Maybe less for the set of two. And the thing is you're supposed to replace them every month or so. And so I'm almost glad that they didn't work because that would have been an extra expense. So anyway, um, but the one thing that really has helped and I can point out the exact day that I started to do it in earnest. Um, I was, it was this, it was this day here. It was the weekend before I had, uh, the day before I had spent, uh, we, we visited my mom. And so I guess I just wasn't paying attention. I didn't drink as much water that day. And the next morning I wake up and my very first pumping session of the day is usually the most prolific. Like here I get seven ounces in the morning, you know, five and a half, four minimum is pretty standard. Um, and so less than four is bad. One and a half is bad regardless, especially for the first pump of the day. I was like, oh gosh, that's not good. So I need to drink a lot of water. So I started tracking my water intake and I uh, decided to aim for a gallon a day of water plus whatever coffee and tea. 
because those just for one thing just don't make me feel not thirsty the thing is like I have I've gone on record as saying that I think water tracking is silly in planners specifically um that you know your body has a built-in water tractor tracker and it's called thirst but uh I, I think the thing is like I had sort of become immune to thirst in a certain way like I wasn't drinking enough and I didn't notice but as soon as I started really focusing on drinking a gallon a day then I started getting even more thirsty for water even at the end of the night after I'd gotten my gallon in and I started feeling thirsty more and like because my body remembered what it was like to not be dehydrated all the time and uh, yeah my my pee isn't dark yellow for the first time in forever TMI but whatever this is a breastfeeding video I'm talking about nipples um so basically for the last couple of weeks I've been focusing on trying to drink as much as possible um, I use an app to, to help. I have the one, I'll link it below. I use it just because it, um, it syncs with my watch so I can do it on my watch instead if my phone's not handy just to track. Um, and you just, you know, enter whatever I'm, I'm measuring in pint glasses. And so I have to drink eight pint glasses a day, uh, to get my gallon in. And I guess that's what they say anyway, right? Eight cups, but like a cup, a cup. Anyway, that's more than like when I Google how much water should you drink, it's like half that is what's recommended. But the thing is, I really have noticed that immediately my output started going up again. Um, the days that I don't drink in the morning, my morning pumping session isn't as productive. Um, and even like by that day, like that afternoon, I got four ounces in the afternoon so it's immediate, like drink, chugging a couple glasses of water is like immediately boosts my supply. And it's the simplest thing. And like, you don't have to go out and buy all, like, okay, I'm not saying that everyone's milk supply issues are caused by dehydration, obviously. Um, and I'm also not saying that things like milk tea and power pumping obviously works, right? But... <laughs> The thing is, I think that I might not be the only one who didn't realize quite how dehydrated I was. And so if you think that, you know, if, if this video has made you think, huh, maybe I don't drink enough, maybe you should try water tracking or at least just paying attention. Um, I just started with like trying to drink a glass of water every time I pumped because let down triggers thirst anyway. So just chugging a glass of water as you're pumping it helps me relax also, I think, and it helps me just to feel more productive. Like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of psychology behind it too. It's weird. All I'm saying is that if you're dehydrated, that could be part of your problem. So, um, I'm going to have some sort of clickbaity title about how the simplest, you know, one su almost free trick sa save my breastfeeding, whatever. But like, I'm not oversupplying now. It's just, I'm still breaking even almost every day. Some days a little less, some days a little more. This last week, I lost an ounce overall, which in the scheme of things, you know, if I lose one ounce every week, I, I would still have enough until the end of the year, you know, when, when we decide we don't need to pump anymore. So like, overall, I'm going to be fine and I'm trying not to stress about it. So those are my two, I guess, two takeaways. The big ones are drink water and try not to stress about it. Um, it's not the end of the world if you have to switch the formula or supplement with formula. Like with my first daughter, we had to eventually supplement with, supplement with formula at the babysitter. That was it. Um, you know, she was still nursing directly at home and it was fine. And I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking a lot, but anyway, if you are in this position, leave your comments below and I will commiserate with you. Pumping sucks. Um, it just does, but we do it, you know, for a good reason. And I think that I am, I would, I'm happy that I'm able to provide this for my daughter, even though it is a lot of work and stress. Um, but it probably is more stress than it needs to be. And so trying to take it in perspective is helping me a little bit. So that's all uh, I have to say probably several times over. <laughs> if you watched all the way through, hey, welcome. Why don't you subscribe? Because I post videos uh, about my planner stuff like this, as well as motherhood and um, lifestyle topics as well on Sundays. So I will see you in the next video on Thursday, which is, uh, you know, I don't remember, but I'll, <laughs> we'll both be surprised and I'll see you then. Thanks so much. Bye.